Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. So if you're a regular viewer of my furniture makeovers, you will realise I'm not in my studio doing a piece of furniture this week. I'm in the house and I'm going to give one of our bathrooms a makeover. The series is going to be called Make, Do and Mendes. And that's because everything that I own in this bathroom, I actually really like. The previous owners actually put in a fantastic bathroom suite, but some of their choices, i.e. the tiles on the wall and the floor for me just don't work. The dark against the cream in that order doesn't work. The bath on the outside over the years is slightly yellowed, so the bath's gonna get a paint makeover. Something rather spectacular is gonna to happen to the wall behind the bath. Um, floor tiles are gonna get a paint makeover. I'm not sure, that will probably be the last part of this series. I think there will be probably four, maybe five tutorials. I'm just gonna take it steady um, where I get up to each weekend. I will probably hashtag episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four into the description um, box below so that you can follow if you want to follow along each tutorial. Things like the tiled floor, that will be one whole tutorial. So people really are interested in painted tiles and the jevity of them. So I will also come back a year later and we'll talk about how well these tiles survived the last year. So that will be something that we have to revisit in time. But please enjoy the step-by-step -step kind of tutorials. There's a lot, there's gonna be a lot of talking because I'm gonna explain my reasonings for things and how it might help you in a quick fix to a room that can be rather expensive to change. Um, a few great ideas. Guys, I know this bathroom looks great. It was the only thing in the house that I felt like if I wanted to change it, I would have to spend a lot of money taking the tiles off everything and the walls. It's a big job. So if I need to do that in a year's time or two years time, then we will do that, but we will still keep the suite. But I think I can do this in a really cheap way, looking absolutely fabulous. So first up, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the room. It's quite a big bathroom. It's three rooms knocked into one. I'm gonna explain all of what that is and the things that I may change in this room for the first tutorial. Then I've got to wait for Mr. M to come home from work so that we can unplumb this bath and take it out. And I've got the space to work on the wall behind. So let's take a quick look at the actual space we're gonna be working on.
As you will have just seen, the bathtub came out of the space really simply. All I needed to do was disconnect this waste pipe. The taps are still live, but I will not be turning them on during this process. So I want to take you through some of my design choices for this space. And one of them is the back wall of this room. Now, I want to explain why we have steps in this bathroom because the previous owner of this house did an amazing job of this space. Uh, I suppose it, at the time, this look was really fashionable and I think I can just elevate it that little bit more. So the bathroom, as you've seen, there's steps at this side where the bath is. Now, originally there was a wall between that level and this level and the bath was on this side and there was a sink on the other side. So the previous owners wanted to expand this bathroom and what they did was knock that wall out and very cleverly they moved the toilet to this side and the bath went up on that, on that podium and they put a step in to get to that level, blocked in a door here because that would have been access to the toilet and made a bigger bathroom. There's also a section on the other side of the camera which you may have seen an archway through to another room which they knocked into that to add a big double shower which I thought was so clever. It makes for a spacier room. Here in the UK we tend to have quite small bathrooms and I think this has just elevated the space and they did a great job. So one thing that I'm not keen on in this bathroom is the amount of tile. There, this bathroom is tiled from the floor to the ceiling. The only space that isn't tiled is the ceiling. And I think ultimately it makes it quite echoey. As you can tell on this video, it's quite echoey in this space. It's not soft. I want to soften the space. So the look that I'm going for is a country house, chic, boutique chic feel. And how I'm gonna do that, number one is the tiles are changing. I think I mentioned that we're gonna paint the tiles and that will probably be in one or two videos later. So I'm hashtagging each video. I think I mentioned that one, two, three, four, five, maybe how many it will be in the description, but stick with me here so I can explain first up the tiles and the wall behind the bath is going to change. So the reason I'm changing this wall is because it's the tallest wall and it's a really good vista. And I think that the space there for a fantastic wall mural. I'm not gonna paint the mural, I'm gonna be using a paper mural behind. And because the bath is not attached to the wall, it means that they can be um, a wonderful design there, which is what I love about freestanding baths. Had this been my bathroom, I would not have had a single tile on the wall because of the freestanding bath. I probably would have had a panelled section and a plastered wall above. But that's not the case. So I want to cover this wall in with this mural. I'm gonna take you through that step by step. There's things that I'm gonna to need to do to make that happen. So that will be in today's tutorial. Um, also, I want to add a, um, a skirting board around the room for connection from wall to tile. I think that will really elevate the space as well as coving at the top. Um, other countries call that different things. We use um, coving in the UK. I think that will finish the ceiling quite nicely. There is a cupboard in that corner that I want to change. I've got a reclaimed door and I want to change that, which means that can be painted. What else are we doing in this space? I think that's one or two things. Oh, the windows. I'll explain that as we go. I'm adding some trim around the windows and into the reveals. So that means the windows can be painted and the edges of the window. I will show you at some point some of the other windows in the house. They're really panelled out really beautifully and I think that means that I can add some more colour around the window frames and on the skirting boards which will hopefully push this beigey colour tile into the background. So first up let's start marking out this wall. I'll explain probably probably, probably with a voiceover as I go along what I'm doing to that wall and the reasonings for my choices as we go. So let's get stuck in.
Of course, a wallpaper mural will not stick to tiles. So I do need to cover in this wall. And as you can see, I'm measuring out for some marine ply board. Now I did a lot of research on whether I could plasterboard over tile and lots of mixed messaging, especially with weight restrictions. There's already plasterboard plus a layer of tiles and another layer of plasterboard. So I've opted to go with marine ply five mil and I'm going to apply this with silicone, which silicone will stick to um, a ceramic tile very well because it goes around bathtubs. It also is a great uh, adhesive. Um, tiles like this, ceramic tiles have silica in them, which is glass, and I know that it will stick really, really well. So I'm marking out my wall for um, three boards of um, marine ply ready to apply it to the surface and the great thing about this is if I choose a year later on to remove this it can all peel back off and come right back down to the tile surface.
So I'm now day two of the project and it's gone pretty well so far. I'm just gonna run you through some of the issues that I've had with this project and they're mainly my error. One of which was that when I went to the wholesalers to buy the silicone, which is sticking the wood panelings to the wall, I actually picked up the wrong product. This one says uh, exterior wood and window sealant, which I thought was heavy duty and it would be exactly the same as this one, but it's not. So silicone, hello little friend. Silicone is, um, the, it's the one that really stinks. It's kind of rubberized, it's really not nice. And you have to find the one that says silicone on it, not sealant. Sealant is very different. But I will be using probably this to put the cornicing up because it's lightweight, kind of polystyrene. It's not polystyrene, I don't know what it's made of. I'll read the instructions. So guys, speaking of instructions, always read the instructions, read what the product is. Um, and I knew that I needed silicone because it will stick to ceramic glass, um, very smooth surfaces. These tiles have um, uh, silica in them, which is glass particle, that's in the glaze. So I needed the silicone, which would stick. The other error that I've kind of made with the project was because I only had two tubes of this, I was trying to be a little bit sparingly with the application to the upper board and where there's undulations in the tiles, my silicon didn't meet those tiles so I've not got adhesion in the middle section. It's really good all the way around the edges and a little bit into but I think the tiles must dip in a little bit. So all these little um, tape swatches that you can see on this board, this morning I got up early, I've drilled a little hole and I've poked in the nozzle and pushed a little bit more silicon into the, those areas, taped over it and pushed it down and it has remedied the issue. As I go up to the top section, I'm gonna tackle this slightly different. I'm gonna actually apply the silicon to the tiled wall rather than the back of the board. That was quite difficult, um, holding the board with all of the silicon on your fingers. It's not very pretty. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've just got a couple more areas around this area where the um, five mil ply feels a little bit loose, not loose, but baggy. You can feel that it's not quite touching the tiles. So I'm gonna continue just putting two more holes in and using the silicon, pushing it down, taping it up, leaving it to dry. We can go back in with the wood filler, which I've got to do along this crevice at the bottom, and then it can be sanded. And then I know the substrate is stuck really firmly to the tiles. Remember guys, the reason I'm using this product and doing it this way is should I decide in a year or two time, I wish we never got rid of those tiles, I can get underneath, peel all of this back and the tiles will still be perfect underneath, just rem remove all of the silicon. So I'll show you a little bit of what I'm doing with these drilling and filling from the top surface and then we can start by applying that final board.
final board of marine ply went in so much easier than the previous two, even though it was up high. Applying the silicon to the wall is probably the right shout for this. Um, when you've got it on the back of the board and you're holding it, you're putting your fingers in it, it's not very nice. So apply the silicon, help the amount, make sure you cover lots of areas. This one has got such a much better, great adhesion to the wall and the substrate behind. I want to talk a little bit about some of the choices, why I've done this. Um, I did research on YouTube and I've never seen anybody stick marine ply to tiles for a wall mural. Um, I'm sure it's been done before. I did research, you can tile over tile. It's a great substrate to tile on top of, but I didn't want tiles. Um, you can plasterboard, but there's a few mixed reviews about plasterboarding over tiles, getting the adhesion. I think you have to sand the surface. Didn't want to do that. Like I said, should I want to remove this a, a couple of years down the line, I can scrape all of the sealant off and the tiles will still be good underneath. Um, and also plasterboarding, we're upstairs in this property, it's extra weight. Underneath here is the return of the staircase. I didn't want to put any more due stress on the floor. There's a lot of weight in tiles and plasterboard, whereas this is quite lightweight, five mil. So that's why I've done that. What next? Um, there will be filling to do. Obviously the little holes I'll have to fill and the connections and sand corking all the way round. I'm gonna leave that until this kind of sets in, um, probably tomorrow. I am now gonna move on to the cornicing, coving, crown molding, whatever you, wherever you are, whatever you call it. Um, crown molding is American, and I think that means um, decorative molding in wood. Of course, I'm not gonna be using wood. I need something really lightweight. So, and I've used this before. It's, I'm not sure what it's made of. It's a little bit like polystyrene, but it's not. It's very lightweight. As you can see, very lightweight. Um, and it'll be easy to apply to the ceiling and the tiles. I've got a couple of difficult corners to deal with, because as you know, the ceiling in here slopes up and you can get a protractor and work out the middle of those two things, but of course this is kind of lightweight. I cannot cut it with a chop saw. It's all got to be cut with a blade. So it's gonna be one of those Jonathan things. Let's just risk it for a biscuit. I have got some spares of these, which I had from a previous project, and I'm just gonna mark out the ceiling it drops eight centimetres, it goes into the ceiling, along the ceiling, eight centimetres on the angle, eight centimetres down, eight centimetres across. I'm gonna mark out on the wall, especially on these areas, I will show you, on the areas going up, and I'm gonna find a middle line from corner to corner and make a rough cut on some of the spare and see if I can connect it nice and cleanly on that pivot, which will also be the same way inverted for the top pivot. And I can use those cuts as a guide where to cut my fresh cornicing as I'm applying it. Wish me luck, guys.
So that's my first two pieces of cornicing applied to the corner of the room. This kit is really good because it comes with several corner pieces and full lengths with 45 degree cuts. So I've started with the shorter pieces and then the pre-cut piece that I've measured to size, which will slot in with a 45 degree angle at the other end. It's always a good place to start is from the doorway, above the doorway. It's not in your eye line, a little bit like wallpapering with a pattern. If you've got to go all the way around the room and connect, the best place to connect is in a corner above a doorway. As you can see, my next length has the pre-cut 45 degree angle in the far corner. And then you can see me bringing back my little sample pieces of my angle. I'm not completely risking it for a biscuit. I've used them as a template to make my cut in exactly the same angle, which makes for a really clean fit. And then I can go onward with the next section and make the next cut so we get the most perfect angle. The final thing for me to do before I finish up and get some rest today is using a two-part filler to fill the hairline gap between the three connections of the boards. And yes, you may notice at that top board, there is some tape again. There was a little looseness to that section. Looking back at the edit of this video, I really didn't apply enough sealant in that area. And probably if I was to do this again, I would double up on the thickness of board. I think the five mil ply is a little bit flexible, which allows for not as good connection and probably more sealant was needed once again. But I'm happy it's remedied the issue just filling up those holes and tomorrow I can get stuck in with sanding and I should have a very smooth surface ready for my wall mural.
So I'm now day three of this project. I'm pretty happy with the progress. The crown molding, coving, cornicing, whichever you want to call it, looks pretty good. It needs a little bit more corking around the edges before we can paint the ceiling. The ceiling has um, a pull cord for the light, a speaker in the center, and also a vent to take away the steam from the room. And they have all discolored over time. The plastic has gone a bit yellow in its tone. So I've decided to spray paint them out with a fresh matte white finish before we paint the ceiling. The back wall just needs a little bit of sanding. Um, I'm gonna start that now, I think, because I wanna get the dust gone before we start any painting. Um, and that will take a coat of paint before next week's tutorial, which will be applying the paper wall mural, something pretty to look at. And I can, I suppose it will give me the, spare me along with the project when I can see something pretty. It's all of the underbelly of hard work that has to go in before I get to do the pretty stuff. So please stick with me. So on with the sanding first.
that's just about all from today's video. Thank you if you've watched from beginning to end. I know it was kind of a long video. Next week will be much shorter. It's all about adding the paper wall mural to our newly covered up tiled wall. Here's a glimpse of what you're gonna see. This is the actual paper mural. Lots of trees that are gonna go right up to the top of that really tall wall. Really excited for this. There's a glimmer of the bluey colour that will be at the top. So therefore I think the bath might have to be blue, which I've got this lovely colour here. Um, and I think this is gonna be the colour, but I will get the paper mural on first, bring the bath back and then make that decision on how that looks. A few weeks after that, we're gonna be painting the floor tiles. Here's a sample that I've done on one of the original tiles from this floor. Not quite this design, but something very near to it. I've had a stencil made, I've designed one from some inspiration from another tile. This is an Annie Sloan paint scraper and it's got one coat of lacquer on here. Did anything come off? No, it's still there. So I'm pretty sure that my recipe for tile, painted over tile, should withstand quite a lot. So I'm quite comfortable with that. Um, the trims will be probably, the trims and the window reveals will probably be the week after next. I am going away for a little while, so there might be a little blip in the middle. But for now, I want to say thank you for joining me. If you're new here because you found me through the bathroom makeover and you're kind of into interior things, thank you for joining me. I hope that you really have enjoyed this so far and continue by subscribing and watching the whole project from beginning to end over the next few weeks. And of course, to all of my lovely furniture painters out there, thank you for joining me through this time. And if you are new and interior inspired and you've never painted a piece of furniture, check out my back catalog of painted furniture there is so many tutorials, over 150. It might just inspire you to do a furniture makeover for your home. But for now, thank you so much. I will see you all next week.